Millions of galaxies have been revealed in stunning photographs from Chile's Vera Rubin Observatory. The images captured by the largest camera ever built. Joining me live is Dr Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist with the ANU. So James Webb, all the talk was James Webb. Yep. That's yesterday's news. <laughs> this is bigger, better. Is that oversimplifying it? No, no, it is bigger, better. Look, it is on the ground. So, you know, James Webb has the benefit of being in space, so it always is going to have that edge. Points out at other galaxies. Yeah, and, and you're away from that atmosphere. Being on the ground means that um, you can build them a little bit bigger. So this telescope is bigger than James Webb. As you said, it has a, a large camera. So the camera is 3.2 gigapixels. So that's 3.2 billion pixels. So it's like 2,000 times bigger than your phone camera. I was going to say, give it to me. And... Yeah, so like 2,000 phone cameras right. stuck together. And so because it's a large camera and a large telescope, it can see lots of area at a time. So that's the key, is it will be able to image right. the entire southern sky every a few bigger... months picture as well. Yeah, so bigger picture, so you, you, so you can see more detail or go fainter yeah. and see more of it a chunk. So as an example, we've seen these first images, but already in the first two days, it's found 2,100 new asteroids. 2,100? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like just by being able to see that sensitive an image that wide and long. Well, let's get on to Asteroid Watch. Exactly. While we're on there, because the city killer that you terrified our viewers about that not, dropped very much lower on the scale, to be clear. Not going to hit Earth. Yeah. I'm just going to call that. Exactly. No, but I don't think so. It could hit the moon. Yeah, and and, and so when the when the odds shifted away from the Earth, they kind of shifted towards the moon. It's still only four percent. It's not even four percent. Just about that. Yeah, that's but pretty high. Look, it's 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 almost one in you know one in twenty five. That's that's enough that you would want to pay attention to. If, if you had a one in twenty five chance of you know winning the lotto or something like that, you would be quite excited. So. The, the thing is now, because there's a non-zero chance of it hitting, what would that impact look like? So right. th that's the real question. Because it's smaller, it's a city killer. Could it knock it off kilter? Could it alter anything to do with what the moon does now? Because we know without the moon, as it is, life could cease to exist. Yeah, yeah. That, that's well, not too dramatic to say. No, it's not. Right? Our rotation would dramatically be thrown off. There, there would be a dramatic change. Tides would planet. drop off yeah, as well. Yeah, a huge amount. So, so we do know it's not going to alter the orbit of the Earth or the orbit of the moon now, okay. because, of, because of the size. Because right. the size is 55 to 80. What it looks like it may do, and this is where the worry is, that you imagine this thing flings into the moon, all of that rock then breaks off the moon and then comes to the Earth. Right. Now, it's, we're not worried about it hitting the ground because it'll be so small our atmosphere will absorb it. There's actually a worry that it may hit all those satellites that we have going around us and actually cause a problem. So it's, what, it's one of those downward scenarios that we're now thinking, all right, it's not even going to hit the Earth, not even going to really do damage on the ground, but because of the way the Earth is now set up, actually still may have an impact. So plunge, what, mobile phones, satellites, all this, and you can't just replace them overnight. No, and especially if, if they're they... not, if a lot of them are knocked out, it'll be... Massive, there, there, right? there, there could be a massive consequence in addition to them breaking up and then creating their own ring of debris. So it's a, it's a real, and again, okay. not to say that that's what we should worry or happen. That's one of four scenarios. Right. But also telling people that, you know, we're, we shouldn't just think about the Earth in terms of safety. We really have to think about the moon. I always think about the moon. Yeah. Um, so... Can we, will we try to laser it away if it's heading towards the moon? So, look, there, there is a question now of can we do a mission to alter its orbit away from yeah. the moon? We've known we've done that before. And, again, it's trying to in, in show the, to, the, to the necessity to NASA that when we reach a decent threshold, we should consider this mission because of the moon right. and that downward impact. And how are they so sure it won't alter its course in any way? Do we always know what's inside it? Could there be something in that's more explosive inside? <sighs> so you, 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 can, really? you can get a rough estimate on its mass ba based on how it alters its orbit and also its rotation. So these things are spinning. So you can actually get a really good estimate of, of mass there. Um, so we can kind of get a good, good idea of what it is. There's always still a little bit of uncertainty, right? You, there could be a surprise in the center. Okay. But even if there's a huge solid surprise, it won't still probably do that much. The probably. Moment. Probably. You've got but again, me worried. This is the point. It's, it's all probability. All so right. You've where got do you me associate worried. that risk? Seven years, laser team, you've got to sort it out. So, um, you know. Get on it. Figure it out. Not huh. you. Them. <laughs> them. Us. Or, or help them. Brad Tucker, uh, thank you for scaring me again this week.